Where is the boy? I bet Owen's got him out tending to the moisture farm. Owen's always got him working. That boy should be playing. Welcome to the Printer Prop Shop. I'm Michael. It's good to be back. I recently went on vacation for a couple weeks, so I apologize for the delay. I'll try to keep up with the videos from here on out. My wife and I actually went on vacation. We went and saw a bunch of different countries and things like that. We had a wonderful time, but as much as I love that, I am glad to be back. Building things for you to see and for you to maybe go out and build on your own. Today, and I hope you love the intro because I I didn't work too hard on it. <laughs> it was it was kind of a spur of the moment and just kind of went through it. But I enjoyed it nonetheless. It was, it was fun to do. I hadn't really shot anything um, of substance in a while. So that was kind of getting me back into it and playing around with it. So I hoped you like it. But today, as you saw, we've got the binoculars from Kenobi. So I'm gonna say this, they're not extremely accurate. What I did was I went into Fusion 360 off of some, some pictures I found online of other creations of it and a still from the actual show of him using them. So I just kind of went off of there and this is what I made. So here's how I did it. So let me start by saying this is not a paid promotion. I haven't received anything free. This is simply just a one veteran to another. Josh is the owner of this company and he served with me in Germany in the Air Force way back when in the mid mid 2000s kind of dating myself but this is just something to say hey one veteran to another take 30 seconds out of my day and help him out he does some sharing for me a lot of times so I much appreciate that and I just wanted to show the thanks to him so check it out so this is the anarchy beard company Josh is currently running this through Facebook on a separate page than his own. You can send him a message directly and set up an order. He has several pictures on there that you can go through. You can comment on any pictures. I suggest uh, if you hit it up, at least give him a like. Drop a like for him. Here's some pictures of the products. And then he has some awesome gear as well. Check him out. Okay, so I started with some reference photos here I just found on the internet. Most importantly, the still from the actual show. They had a lot of good references and things like that. These were ones that I'm guessing someone had just made. They weren't really from the, the show itself. I think even one was a toy. From there, I wanted to get my dimensions, and I didn't really want to measure my head, but I thought the best bet would probably be to measure something else that goes on my head, which would be my glasses which I've just recently started having to wear again with my older age here. And I did the outside of the frame, and then I also did from the outside of the frame to the center of the lens on each side. That way it would match up with my eyes the way they sat on my head. From there it was just a matter of opening up Fusion 360 like I've shown before, and taking those measurements in, and I, I had a couple of issues from the start. I know that you can mirror with Fusion 360. Like you can do one half of it and then it'll mirror the other side and you'll get exact dimensions and things like that. But for some odd reason I just couldn't figure it out and I didn't really want to waste the time researching it on YouTube. It probably wouldn't have taken me way too long, but I, I had to go and get moving on this. It was going to take a little bit um, to finish out the actual project, meaning I was gonna have to wait for paint to dry and things like that and things to print. So I didn't really wanna waste the time on it. And I kept referencing back to the reference photos I was using to make sure I was trying to get at least somewhat of an accurate look to something else. Again, these aren't gonna be screen accurate, but it only took 
maybe a total of maybe an hour and a half designing and then actual print time was about two and a half three hours for the actual body and then the resin print took an hour and a half and honestly most of the time was spent waiting for the paint to dry working on other things so it wasn't that difficult at all from there it was just a matter of sending it to cura and actually lining it up correctly this first go was a failure it just didn't print very well and i wouldn't have wanted to keep it anyway and then I did have another failure after this that resulted in filament issues that the filament just stopped printing out. I think it's because it got a little damp or something like that. But the resin printed first go. I didn't have any issues with any of the rivets here. And again, too, if you're doing rivets, something small like that, always print out more than you need just in case you drop one or lose one or some of them just don't print out. Especially when you're trying to get them off the bed, too, sometimes they'll break. Uh, and then um, you have to reprint the whole go again and it's going to take you know another hour to print it off so it's just better to print a lot more than you need so as you can see those little holes that I made with the little dots in the middle they just didn't come out very well everything else printed out fairly well but those for some odd reason I think it's just because my printer speed I've got it set a little bit too fast probably for something that's small, normally because I'm printing things that are so big that I don't really care about the detail on it. Now I did go ahead and throw on a couple coats of primer, filler primer as I usually do, and then sand it a little bit. I didn't go crazy on the sanding because I wanted it to be a little rough. And uh, when I went to airbrush on here, I used Wicked Black. Now, the reason I left it a little rough was I wanted things to catch my weathering. Now, if it was really smooth and things like that, it's, it's just not going to catch your weathering so much, at least not for me. And then with the intricate pieces, I went ahead and uh, did those in silver. But I mixed them with a little bit of that Wicked Black, just so I'd have more of kind of a, kind of a gunmetal look. That way I didn't have to worry about the shades being off at all. And it came out really nice. I like the way it looks. So when it came to the knobs that were actually molded into it, I, I didn't really want to airbrush those. I wanted them to have just a little bit better look and I didn't want to have to worry about the overspray of airbrush, so I used my paintbrush to get them. I did go over them with a couple of coats. Um, you can see here I'm applying uh, the regular coat up front and it's not coming out very well at first. But once you do go and throw on that second coat, it comes out a lot better and my little tip too that I picked up from Joe from uh, Odin's channel is that when you're paint brushing do your fir first coat and then go over your second coat in the opposite direction of what you did your first coat in so if you did it up and down do it left and right turn it 90 degrees and do it like that so from here I went back into my reference photos because there's a little piece on the front there if you can see it with the rivets. Now with this I, I thought a couple different things. I could have molded it in and then added the rivets afterwards but I thought I had I had some foam around that looked about the width of that piece. So I just laid it out on my um, binoculars there and made some some rough estimates of where it would go. I kind of lined it up with the holes and that was where I wanted it. Made some little notches, cut out a larger piece than I needed, and then started trimming from there. After that, I just laid it down on the actual binoculars and just went over it with a knife, made a couple more notches. I do have a, a cutting surface, but it's currently in, covered in a couple of different things and I didn't really want to dig it out, so I just used a piece of cardboard with a, just a saw blade for a straight edge and proceeded to go and trim out the little pieces after that after measuring them where I kind of wanted them and I, I knew I wanted them equal so that's why I used the calipers for measuring and just kind of eyeballed it with the way that I wanted to go and I, I like the way it turned out it's it's not extremely perfect but it doesn't look extremely perfect in the still from the show either, so I think I did pretty okay on it. 
From there I just plastic dip the piece and let it dry. After that it's on to weathering. So once again I've mentioned this in the past about these weathering kits by Tamaya. They are stupendous. I will say that. Um, my wife got them for me one Christmas. I believe this last Christmas. And they are a lifesaver. They, It's more of a granular um, item rather than a paint. And it'll really dirty up your item. I, I, I cannot say enough about them. And they're about 30 to $40 for the whole kit. But I think you get like six different packs and three to a pack. And you don't have to use a lot of it. They'll last you a long time. So I highly suggest getting it if that's what you want. So guys, that's how I did it. Just some Fusion 360, printed out my model. I did have a couple failures with the whole body piece. The rest printed out just fine, but the failures were more on my part, some filament issues, things like that. But it printed off in about three hours when I finally got it done. The resin pieces, they printed off really quick. No issues at all. I think I honestly probably spent more time waiting for paint to dry than I did designing it or things like that. And I just used some reference photos and who really cares if it's screen accurate or not? It's, it's a nice little prop. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thanks for watching and have a great day. And go make something, it's easy. You get a computer, spend a little time and watch YouTube and that's how you figure it out. Thanks again, have a great day.